The Court of Owls has terrorized this city for centuries. And they're not about to stop. But the days of no one talks about them are finished. I will find every last one of them. And bring their crimes to light. People of Gotham. You deserve to live without fear. I swear to you. I will not stop fighting. Until you can. Gotham Knights was a game that caught my attention when it was announced because we've never played a game before where we're controlling the Bat family and exploring the aftermath of Batman's death and how Gotham City reacts. Now we have played as Batman protecting Gotham City at all costs in the Batman Arkham games, but this was something completely new. For the first time we got to fully control the Bat family and play as either Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing, or Red Hood from the start of the game to the end of the game. The Court of Owls was also going to play a prominent role in the game as the main antagonist. Gotham Knights would also have co-op so you could play with a friend to take back Gotham from criminals. This all sounded intriguing and it was a game I wanted to try with friends and I did. The game starts off with the last battle between Batman and Ra's al Ghul. Now Batman is really injured but he's giving it his all to be Ra's al Ghul. You can see how skilled Batman is to face off against a man who's been alive for over 600 years. To ensure that Ra's al Ghul does not win, Batman sacrifices himself and destroys the Batcave to take him out since the last thing Gotham City needs is to be invaded by the League of Shadows. Batman sends out his infamous Code of Black that we see in the trailer where he tells the Bat family that he's dead and that he will be leaving assets behind for them to continue to protect Gotham City. We can clearly see how each of them are affected by his death. I personally chose to be Red Hood for my playthrough of Gotham Knights, and I really enjoyed it. Now, if you know anything about Jason Todd's history, you know that he has a complicated relationship with Bruce Wayne. The most infamous story between them being a death in the family, which was adapted into the animated movie, Batman Under the Red Hood. For those who don't know, Jason Todd was the second Robin who got brutally beaten and killed by the Joker. Jason Todd would eventually be resurrected by the League of Shadows. This version of Jason Todd had already gone through all those events, and it seemed he was working with Batman and the Bat family to atone for his past sins as Red Hood. So naturally I felt that Batman's death would have the most impact on him, and I was right. The more I played Gotham Knights as Red Hood, the more I enjoyed his story. You can see by Red Hood's actions and interactions with the villains that he is trying his best to be like Batman, but the villains want to push him over the edge. Now Jason in this game is built to be a brawler and his attacks are brutal and while his guns may not be lethal, they still pack a punch. I like this version of Jason because while he's still broken and suffers from the effects of the Lazarus Pit, he's still able to keep his humanity. Red Hood is also not afraid to socialize with the rest of the Bat family. One of the best interactions that shows Jason's character development is with Alfred recalling how both he and Bruce saw Jason evolve into a better man. Bruce blamed himself for your death and for the darkness that followed. But even in the worst of times, we saw that you had the potential to emerge as a better man. Some days I barely feel human. let alone a better man. He believed in you and was proud of how far you'd come, especially after everything you've been through. I was highly engaged with Red Hood's story from beginning to end in Gotham Knights and to see how far Jason has come from being a sidekick to a full-blown hero despite his many flaws. Now while the story is pretty good for Gotham Knights, there were still a lot of problems that I didn't like. One of the big issues that I had was with the gameplay. I didn't like that the game was a looter shooter type of game. Don't get me wrong, I like that this game had different cosmetics and costumes for our heroes, but the fact that we had to do multiple missions or side activities that were repetitive was no fun. The combat also felt slow and sluggish. Had the combat been tweaked to be faster, I think it would have made fighting waves of enemies a 
lot more fun. I think the graphics could have been better, especially since this was supposed to be a game that highlighted the power of the next-gen consoles. One of the big mistakes that most of us that have played Gotham Knights agree with is not making the game 60 frames per second. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the game being 30 FPS, but a game that has a lot of movement and action should always have a higher frame rate. One of the aspects I liked a lot about this game was the Court of Owls. Now, the Court of Owls is a recent addition to the Batman mythology in the comics. The Court of Owls make up the elitist class of Gotham's wealthiest and influential citizens, and they are behind Gotham's evolution. Now, if you know anything about Gotham City, you know there's a huge gap between the rich and the poor people of Gotham. The gap is increased further with the emergence of Batman and supervillains in Gotham. The idea that there's a group out there controlling everything is scary, especially in the modern world that we live in today. The Court of Owls are scary, but what's scarier than them is their enforcers, the Talons. Talons are huge zombified undead ninjas that the Court of Owls uses to enforce their will on Gotham. One of the things that I liked was that they made Jacob Kane the leader of the Court of Owls. It's a nice twist and kind of fitting to bring back one of Batman's old foes in the comics, not to mention he's also the uncle of Bruce Wayne. One of the big plot points in the story is the Court of Owls search for a Lazar Pith in Gotham, which brings them into conflict with the League of Shadows. Slowly, we piece together this story, and while the Gotham Knights are pitted against the Court of Owls, they are both being manipulated by the true enemy to Gotham City, the League of Shadows. If you know anything about the League of Shadows, they are dangerous and believe in restoring order to the world by any means necessary, even if it means the destruction of a city. Most of us have seen the League of Shadows depicted across various media, from the Dark Knight Christopher Nolan movies to the Batman animated series. The League of Shadows is obsessed with maintaining order and balance. Their leader, Ra's al Ghul, is even more dangerous, but only one person has ever defied him, and that person has been Batman. Batman has been Ra's al Ghul multiple times and has earned Ra's al Ghul's respect, and is the only one in his eyes worthy enough to be a successor. After Ra's al Ghul and Batman die in their final battle, his daughter Talia al Ghul takes over and manipulates the Gotham Knights into thinking that she's an enemy of the League. The League of Shadows is dangerous, and when their war with the Court of Owls spills into Gotham City, it is up to the Gotham Knights to stop both factions and save the city from destruction. Now, while all this action is going on, we also get to fight some of the villains from Batman's rogues galleries, uh, such as Harley Quinn, Mr. Freeze, and Clayface. Now, while I enjoyed these super villain segments, I would have loved it if they had put more villains into this game. I personally would have loved to have seen Riddler, Poison Ivy, Two Face, Deathstroke, Black Mask, and Lady Shiva added to the story as well, since all of them would be able to bring their own chaos to Gotham. Now, while the villain segments were fun, my favorite fight was with Mr. Freeze. Harley Quinn's villain segment was fun as well. The only one I wish was written better was Clayface's villain segment. Now, knowing that this game was about Batman's death and having read the comics, we know Batman will eventually be coming back, and he does, but as a mind control puppet of Talia al Ghul. I really enjoyed having to fight against Bruce, especially when I was playing as Red Hood, because Batman saved Jason, and now it was Jason's turn to save him. It added a lot more emotion to death to have to fight the father figure who never gave up on you. Jason helps free Bruce from mind control, but once again he sacrifices himself to take down both the League of Shadows and the Court of Owls by destroying the Lazarus Pit. All of you grew without me. Become your own heroes. The knights that Gotham really needed. <coughs> Together you're stronger than the Batman ever could be. I'm so proud of all of you. And I'm sorry. What are you doing? You might want to run. It was never the criminals of Gotham that scared me. It's you. The rich want more. Politicians who pander to your reckless demands. Police who hurt the people they're supposed to protect.
Seeing Gotham without Batman has always been an interesting concept, but I feel Gotham will always need a Batman. It does not matter who wears the cowl, whether it's Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, Damian Wayne, or Terry McGinnis. Gotham Knights overall is not the best game I've played, but it's not bad. I think the concepts and ideas they had were very good, but they just weren't implemented correctly. I personally wish they would have added a lot more diversity to the missions and side activities that we did in, in Gotham City. One of the biggest criticisms I would say is how the open world felt so lifeless, like other than doing side missions, activities, or progressing in the story, I didn't have the desire to explore Gotham or get all the collectibles. I wish they had added more civilians and integrated them into the story. It would have been interesting to see their perspective of Gotham having no Batman. Overall, this game is decent, but I would not play it again personally. Gotham Knights could have been a great game, but overall I feel it hurts the Batman franchise more than it helped. The story was decent, but it could have had moments that made the loss of Batman feel more emotional. The side activities were repetitive and boring, the point system and the looting system were terrible, the combat was slow, the graphics could have been upgraded, and let's be honest, the game should have had a higher frame rate. If I had to rate this game on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say it's a 6.5 out of 10. This game is worth getting if it's on sale, but it's not worth paying the full price. What are your thoughts on Gotham Knights? Did you love the game, hate the game, or did you not even bother to play the game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed my video, feel free to leave a like and consider becoming a subscriber to be notified of my latest videos, shorts, and live streams on the channel. I recently got partnered and have unlocked membership, so if you want to get cool perks like behind the scenes content, feel free to hit the join button as well to unlock exclusive perks that will be only available to members. Anyways, I hope you enjoy your day and here's a video that YouTube recommends for you to watch.